We are presented by WinBet Betting as a team sport, but together at WinBet, Eric Allen here down in Palm Beach, Florida with my annual visit with Steve Weish from NFL Network. So good to see you because it's been a couple years because of the pandemic. Isn't it nice? I mean, that's been kind of the undercurrent of these whole league meetings is that they're in person and you're getting to see people and shake hands. Whereas doing it, you know, on the on the virtual stuff, you know, on the video conferences, it was just so controlled. And you're still talking into a camera instead of just saying hey to somebody and leaning up against the wall and, and, and talking. And you can just tell the mood here is just so much better besides the fact that the weather's gorgeous and, you know, we're here at Palm Beach. I had to put the sunscreen on today. It's not a bad thing, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. Because when we left New Jersey, it was about 30 degrees. Yeah, it's better down here. Yeah. But you are an L.A. guy, so you're used to great weather. I wanted to ask you about this stadium for people, Jets fans who are listening or NFL uh, folk around the league who have not had an opportunity to go to that stadium. Is it the best stadium you've ever been to? Architecturally and just everything, it's it's completely off the chart. I mean, there's still nothing like the experience of Lambeau. Okay. Right, in terms of the history and all of that. But in terms of an architectural marvel, I mean, it's almost like you want to go on a tour there because it has a roof, but it's not enclosed, which is why they call it a canopy. Right. Right. It's an open air stadium with that roof. So like on a cooler day, I mean, you you feel the chill. Right. But then the seating is just so incredible. Like the little tail, when you see the aerial, aerial shot, right. that little tail, that goes over an amphitheater. That's the amphitheater where they did NFL honors this year. And then the fact that our offices are literally like 30 yards away from the stadium, it's, it's just a fantastic. But that stadium is its insane. The Raider State, Allegiant, yeah. is like really cool too. The it's Death Star. The Death Star. <laughs> but what they've done inside to kind of mix Vegas and the, the Raiders history, well done. So, But yeah, SoFi Stadium is like next level. If I were to put you on the spot, Steve, what are your top three headlines from the NFL offseason to date? <laughs> uh, let's see. We can go singular. We can go bigger picture. But clearly, player movement. Yep. Player movement to the AFC. Mm. And absolutely insane structure-setting contracts. So if you're Lamar Jackson down in Baltimore, and you see what just happened with Deshaun Watson's deal. All of it guaranteed. Are you not asking for that? You may not get it, but are you not asking for that? You better believe every quarterback coming down the pike now is looking at that. Look at the numbers of Devontae Adams and Tyree Kills. Right. Contract as wide receivers. There's a new floor, my friends. <laughs> so that's another part of all this offseason craziness. So a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to some people in Indianapolis at the Combine, and I was saying, Look at how many young quarterbacks we have in the AFC. And we talk about Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen and Justin Herbert and Lamar Jackson. And at the time, you're thinking, well, maybe Deshaun Watson is traded to the NFC. Maybe he's Atlanta bound or New Orleans bound. Uh, maybe Russell Wilson stays in Seattle or maybe he goes to a quarterback hungry team over there in the NFC. But all these guys are over in the AFC now. What do you make of this? Well, don't forget Matt Ryan just got traded to the yeah, AFC. Yeah. I mean, again, you talk about young guys, the Joe Burrows of the world and all it's yeah, of course, Burrow, yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. I was talking to Bruce Arians the other day, of course, his quarterback, Tom Brady decided to unretire. And he's trying to be politically correct. I said, like, you look at your division now. Okay, Jameis is back in New Orleans after missing most last year with a knee injury. Marcus Mariota is a quarterback in Atlanta. And Sam Darnold or some other question mark is going to be the quarterback in Carolina. Oh, Steve, don't downplay it. They're all first-round <laughs> draft picks. I'm like, yeah, I don't think anyone was clamoring for those guys right. before all this madness uh, took place. So it's it's absolutely insane when you look at you know so many good quarterbacks. Look at your division, right? You guys got Zach Wilson. You got Josh Allen. You got Mac Jones. You got Tua, right? So you've got the young quarterback division. But now you look at – the North, okay. The Steelers, we don't know what's happened there, but Lamar Jackson, right? You've got Deshaun. Joe Burrow. You've got Joe Burrow. Look at the West. Justin Herbert, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, Derek Carr. The people sleep on Derek Carr, too. He's a good player. Yeah. And now they got him Devontae Adams to go with Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro. By the way, if you're a smart fantasy player, 
pushing all the chips on Hunter Renfro. <laughs> okay, that's a slot receiver, for you. With, right? A slot receiver <laughs> with those two guys on the outside. Yeah. Oh man, he's gonna have two hundred catches this year. What did you make of when you heard that one Tyreek Hill was on the market? Two, the Jets were a finalist along with the Miami Dolphins. I, I was very surprised one that he was on the market. Yeah. I mean, because once it got out there, I was like. It, that's not getting out there unless he's about to be moved, mm -hmm. right? The Chiefs keep everything very in-house. So the fact that now that's public, he's getting ready to get dealt. The Jets would have been a good fit for him mm -hmm. um, because of the catch-and-run ability, some of the things you're hearing about what they want to do in Miami. Um, because, again, that's the same scheme that LaFleur runs with the Jets, but also his, downhill, you know, his, his downfield ability with Zach. You know, we know he can pump it, right? Yeah. And, and the fact that he was considering, yeah, I know he tried to downplay it, like, oh, no, it was Miami all along. No, I think Miami might have sweetened the pot a little bit. Um, but I, I think the Jets are a team that's looked at as a team on the come up. I think they see, people see all these draft picks and that they've got an opportunity. Yeah. But it's there's no slow burns in the NFL. There's one thing this, this offseason showed us. There's no more slow builds, man. You've got to be aggressive. Otherwise, other teams are stepping in front of you. You know, this this three- and four-year plan, that has been shortened to a two-year plan, Max. You're so well-connected in NFL circles. What do people think of Robert Sala? What do they think about year one and where he's taking this program? I think it's kind of a wait and see. Yeah. I mean, what do they think of him is, you know, look, he's, he's a great human being, good coach, right? But they just went through so many personnel issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a roster that needs a lot more talent. And they've steadily done some good things this offseason. I mean, they signed some good DBs, getting Uzama, you know, the tight end. That's going to help out the young quarterback. So I think, again, this year is like, okay, now it's progress. What are they going to do? Remember last year, had a first-time offensive coordinator. Second year, how's it going to be with a, with a new, you know, second-year offensive coordinator, second-year head coach? Yeah. How is that going to work? And if they show progress, I mean, I think people will say, okay, Sala is who we thought he was going to be. But then, like I said, look, look at the division. Josh Allen, Mac Jones, Tua now has Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle on the other side. They've got some nice defensive pieces. It's it's not going to be easy. Uh, it seems like Miami's going all chips in, even though they do have a first-year head coach as far as the way they attack free agency. Oh, oh, the Jets are going to have to defend against Tyreek Hill. We know that. Yes. You mentioned Waddle before. He was great in his first season. The Jets – are really high on Elijah Moore. He had five touchdowns. As they should be. As they should be. Yeah. That, that dude's not talked about enough. Okay. He's an explosive player. He's a good player. Yeah. So, and Salah was asked about him today. So, you can use him at slot. You can use him outside. There's so many different things he can do. Uh, what do you make about Miami, uh, McDaniels, being in this division now, coming from San Francisco, that tree? Because we could see this in future off seasons, right, where – Miami and the Jets are looking for a similar type player. Right. Because, again, like you said, they run the same. It's the whole Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan yeah. effect. Um, but what Kyle, what McDaniel's taken from Kyle is the catch and run tackle breaking guy. Mm. Right. And so Tyreek Hill can do that. Like I said, he can go downfield. They signed Raheem Mostert, you know, the running back from the 49ers who can hit it like anybody else. He can turn a four yard run into a 60 yard touchdown. So they're pushing it in. Like I said, there's no more three-year rebuild they've got to find out if Tua is their guy they've given him the pieces now they get Teron Armstead a tackle to help protect him on the front side not his blind side tackle they'll probably address a few things you know on that offensive line in the draft um they've got to find out if he's their guy because if not they got to get in the quarterback market next year they put the pieces in place now let's see they got an offensive head coach um who's got a great reputation yeah um let's see if he's a leader one and let's see if they can put it all together to again to find out if two is their guy. What do you think about the Jets overall in free agency? We don't have to go player by player, but a couple of things Sala discussed were character. Yep. And then how about the postseason experience? CJ Uzama in Cincinnati last year and what a force he was inside that locker room. Um we can go to the other side of the football. Well We'll just go up a level and talk about Lincoln Tomlinson. Lincoln Tomlinson. With, with, with the 49ers, Jordan Whitehead yep. comes over, the safety, the impressive young player with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who's just in the postseason, has got a championship ring. So you're adding guys into the room who've won before. And, and that's important because now you have to show guys who've won. Just like when the Bills went on and got Von Miller, you know, you hear the stuff they're saying, we needed a closer. We needed someone to show these young people how to get it done when it matters most. That is important to have in your meeting rooms. 
that is important to have on the field because a lot of these guys don't know any better. If they've come into the league and lost, that's all they've known, mm. right? So, hey, hey, that that's not how you need to do this, guys. You need to approach it differently. I remember years ago when I covered the Falcons, and they were on the come up, right? Um, and they had a lawyer Malloy at safety. And one day in practice, they had a smaller DB named Brent Grimes. He turned out yes. to be a fantastic player. And he kept on getting touchdowns thrown on him on a fade route by a taller receiver. And everyone kept laughing. The lawyer's like, why are you laughing? Our guy is getting beat. This could happen in a game. It could cost us a game. Let's figure out what we need to do. And everyone's just like, he's right. And those that's the type of character when you look at some of these guys that are coming to the Jets roster that is highly important, coachable guys. That's going to be another part of it, coachable guys who, again, can be extension of the coaching staff on the field. How about the draft class last year? You talk about some foundational pieces for the Jets. You're very high on Elijah Moore. How about Elijah Vera Tucker? We found out here at the league meetings that he's going to be playing right guard next year. Sal is not worried about that at all because he's got Tomlinson at left guard. And you're talking about AVT. He played tackle in college at USC, as you know so well. Uh, Zach Wilson, the number two overall selection. Right. We'll get to him in a second. But uh, Michael Carter, you got him in the fourth round. He led the team in rushing. And then you got some value on day three of the draft last year. Brandon Eckel started for you outside at cornerback. The Jets love Michael Carter the second at the nickel position. And they still have high hopes for Hamza Nasrul Dean and Jamie Sherwood. I keep on coming back to this. At the at the worst, this class is going to be good. At the best, this class could be sensational. Now, <laughs> this is where this is where year two, you find out if it's real though. Okay. Right. They were good on a team that didn't win him any ball games. This is a good point. Okay. Now you add some veteran talent to him. Can they match up? Okay. Can other people who looked at him say that's a good player on film and they're going up against better talent, as we've just talked about in the AFC, can they rise to the occasion? And if that's the case, then you nailed it. Year two is the identifier, right? If you see that progress when they get a little bit stronger, when they know the system, when they know what they're coming into, hopefully they don't have to be worried every day about all these COVID protocols mm -hmm. and they can focus on what they need to do. That's important. So I, I really do like some of their talent. But again, I love a guy like CJ Uzama. Again, an engaging guy who's going to push. That's important. So I do like this class. Of course, Zach Wilson is, is everything. Now that, that's what you're trying. You got two guards now to protect him from the inside mm -hmm. and some of that stuff they're getting. That's going to be important for him, especially if he needs to have time to get the ball downfield. What do you think about Wilson coming out? And now after watching him a year, what do you think? And where's his next step? I, you know, I didn't, I didn't watch enough of him to say, like, okay, this guy's going to be a superstar, right? Yeah. Even though I'm on the West Coast, you know, those games are still late. But I, I saw enough of, like, he's incredibly talented. We have got to get out of the way of thinking, though, a collegiate player being extremely talented and think more of how he fits into a certain scheme. And I think as the season went along last year, he learned from his mistakes and he got better in the scheme. So I think that's going to be the telltale. Again, can he continue to grow in the scheme? Can he continue to be a leader? That's going to be important. Rookie quarterbacks often are like, okay, let me wait and see how I fit in this locker room. Sure. But can he take over? And, and again, you're looking at what these other teams are doing. He's got to be better in all aspects of everything he does for the Jets to take the next step. A lot of pressure playing in New York, don't you think? <laughs> a lot of pressure playing everywhere. Yeah. You good. know, you you can be you can be in uh you know Jacksonville. If you're no good, you're gone. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, you got some added pressure of playing in New York. One of the uh, you've been so gracious with your time as always. Wanted to get your thoughts, the quick observations about the Jets in the draft this year. Yeah. Four and ten overall, four picks in the top 38, nine selections. What do they got to get done? Because I asked Sala about it. Hey, listen, you took care of some needs at free agency. And he said, Yeah, we still have a lot of needs, but the good thing about having a lot of needs is you can go in any direction. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and and they're right. I mean, you look at the strength of this draft, right? You have pass rushers. Mm -hmm. Um, you have some great wide receivers. And I think with one of these top two picks, they might they might have to go wide receiver there um it's just interesting knowing how when i look at what Salah had in san francisco they had edge guys yep. they had guys who get after quarterbacks guys who get you know from from the four spots up front they had linebackers who could run defensive back they just kind of got by with good tough players um 
but the key to them was in the trenches. And then playmakers who got their hands on the ball. Not necessarily high round guys, but dudes who got their hands on the ball. So I think they they but I think, still think they have to go wide receiver early and probably an edge guy early. So Just, four and ten. You're speaking of the Jets fans right now, you're thinking you can't go yeah, wrong and, if you do edge and, and, and maybe receive. Yeah, and, and, and maybe, you know, maybe a safety. A kid out of uh, Notre Dame is a special player. You know, and Salah's a defensive guy. And you look at, the, again, like you got to be able to cover tight ends. Look at the division. you got to be able to cover slot guys. Yeah. So there's some home run hitters. So I, even though I said Salah came from a, a Niners thing where they didn't really necessarily focus too much attention on corners. Right. You might have to look at the. You might have to look at that a little differently again. Looking at the division because you build your roster to win your division first. It is a tremendous point because the Jets did not win a division game last not year. Good. And Salah pointed to as soon as the season ended. Hey, the gap is substantial between us and Buffalo. And right now, the Jets got to narrow that gap. Got to narrow that gap. I mean, that's always a key. You build your roster to win your division, and you handle everything after that. Steve Weish, uh, appreciate your time as always. Great seeing you. Thanks for having me. Enjoy it here. WinBet is now live in New Jersey, and they're bringing the excitement of Win Las Vegas to online sports betting. Get in on all your favorite teams, players, and sports, from boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport. They have what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a special offer, risk-free $1,000 sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com to start winning. WinBet, an official sportsbook and gaming partner of the New York Jets. Offer subject to change. Terms and conditions at winbet.com must be 21 or older and present in New Jersey. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-270-7117. We were presented by WinBet. Betting is a team sport bet together at WinBet. Eric Allen here down at the NFL League meetings with former Jets executive Pat Kerwin of Sirius XM. Great to see you, brother. Yeah. You have the great tan going. I got the sunburn. Well, I live in Florida, and I do my radio show outside every day. Y- yep. So along with that, and I try to squeeze a couple of holes of golf in the morning or fish or something. So I love being outside in Florida, obviously, gives me the opportunity i call my kids today in new york back where you're going they told me it's 12 degrees yeah it was like 11 degrees wind chill last night it's so crazy you're full of kids move down hey so what did you make of what the jets did in free agency well i think i don't think it's over right i think i think they've tipped their hand a bit when they were involved with the tyreek hill thing that they're still looking and they've got the resources to go get one so there's still good players left in free agency I was just talking to Stephen Jones, a couple of GMs, and mm-hmm. I have a list of 60 players that I'm confident will all get contracts, some big, mostly small, a lot of one-year deals. We're almost at 200 one-year deals, which is – I try to make this point to the listeners. We're going to be about 240 of one-year deals when, when we finally get done with this because right after the draft, we'll sign a bunch more guys. But that's just a flood of that many more guys into next year's free agency because that's why there's seven and 800 guys available – and the market's pretty rough for the players. There's a couple at the top that are going to get big deals. There's right. still a couple guys. So would I think there's a receiver? Maybe Jarvis Landry, but maybe not what you're looking for. He's a possession guy and physical. But but you've already said you're going to do something when you tried to get a hill. So I, I would think there's a couple teams that are tight against the cap. Maybe maybe they're going to come forward with a player or two right. that they've got to move. Yeah. So when you heard the Jets were in the hill sweepstakes, what immediately came to mind? So, so usually when I see a mega deal like that coming, I, I think it should always be with a team that thinks they're close to the top. Okay. Now, that's not how I see the Jets, and it's not how I see Miami either. So you want to put yourself over the top with a mega deal on a, on a guy, and you want to make sure that you can get him the ball all the time and do the things that he's good at. Um, I don't criticize him for doing it, but if you're more than one piece away and you drop that much money on a guy, then you start – you know, having to sacrifice somewhere else. So I think in general, team like the Jets, I think the draft is still the most important part. Now, the media has been selling to the public. Oh, those days are over. We're not, we're going to trade our picks away. Well, the Rams did it, but they were close to the top. Right. You still have to have a foundation of draftable players. A, you'd love them to be good, but B, they're cheap. You, for every, for every Tyreek Hill, you need like three or four minimum wage guys to offset the cost. What do you think about what they did in the draft class last year? We talked a little bit about it in Mobile, but 
You got Elijah Moore in the second round. You got Michael Carter in the fourth round. You drafted Elijah Vera Tucker. Of course, you got your quarterback number two overall. We'll get to Zach Wilson in a second. And then you address defense uh, primarily on day three with a couple linebackers, college safeties, and, and some defensive backs as well. But what do you think about that yeah. 21 class? So I'll steal the line from Mike Mayock because I think Mike said it the best, foundational players. Yeah. So when you have them, you draft them, you cross your fingers that they're going to be good. No one really knows until they get on an NFL field and how they handle money and all the things that come with being a rookie. But you do have foundational pieces on offense, you know, mostly offense, not all offense, right. but mostly offense. And – and good guys. Like, I've enjoyed my time talking to the receiver, to Carter, the running back. Those guys, they are the foundational pieces. Now I'll turn to the defense, and, and the draft looks pretty good at pass rushers, looks good at corners. I think I think he could do another wave of foundational guys, mostly on defense. WinBet is now live in New Jersey, and they're bringing the excitement of Win Las Vegas to online sports betting. Get in on all your favorite teams, players, and sports, from boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport. They have what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a special offer, risk-free $500 sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com to start winning. WinBet, an official sportsbook and gaming partner of the New York Jets. Offer subject to change. Terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in New Jersey. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-270-7117. You have a great read on the draft. You were in Mobile with your buddy Jim Miller. Um, but every year I like to talk to you at the league meetings because you have a good pulse of what's happening at the quarterback position. I'll never forget it. Five years ago, that heralded draft class coming out, you said, watch out for Josh Allen. Uh, I know there's no Josh yeah. Allen in this class, but are, are there going to be quarterbacks taken in the first round? Yeah, two or three. Um, wait, there's a need, It's a need position. If you don't have one, you got to keep taking chances. That's what Pete Carroll did in Seattle. He just kept taking them until he got to Russell. And he didn't mind who he paid. If they weren't going to be better than Russell, he moved them out of there. So you can't stop trying. So that's the first piece. So I interviewed a bunch of guys off the record, GMs, former GM, former coach, just enough guys. And they all know the quarterbacks in this draft. And so Pickett came out number one by everyone. Wow. Number two was the young man from Cincinnati. He Ritter. got he, he, Ritter got more votes. Uh and, and he lined up second when I tallied the whole thing up. And then Malik Willis was third. So I found it interesting that Ritter landed up in the two spot. And uh, so I w- I've gone back to a couple guys. Hey, I didn't tell you the results because they, w- they would answer my stuff yeah. at different times. They said, Ritter came out second best in, the, in your eyes. So let's go back and talk about Ritter. Athletic, big hands, yeah. good arm, lots of game experience. He'd almost played 50 games. So those are the things that strike and people that are interviewing him. One, one guy said to me, he goes, I went in to watch him thinking I, maybe I'll take him in the second round. He goes, I left going up. I get a shot. I'm taking him in the first round. So he's to me, the curveball surprise guy. Maybe he's my Josh Allen. Uh, oh, come on. The guy, the, the, <laughs> guy, the, the guy you didn't mention there was Pickett. Yeah. Everyone had him won because in this league, we both know. If you take one in the first round, you're going to put them on the field before that year's over. Mm -hmm. Everyone says they don't want to. Everyone says they're going to prep them. And most of the time, you put them on the field. You put your guy on the field, and you set it up so no one else could go on the field. He didn't really have a backup that was uh, the old old veteran that could go out there for a year and let the kid learn. And I get that. But if you realize that that's how this works, the most ready to play pro football is Pickett. So someone's going to have Pickett, maybe not in your division. Though. Is anybody calling the Jets at either four and ten? Uh, you know, because whether they're targeting a quarterback or somebody else. Well, calling you guys. Yes. Um, you've got two picks. I don't think anyone's going to take a quarterback up there. They're all. It, it appears to me that they're positioning themselves to maybe the quarterback start at nine or ten in there. So you could be done with your players by then. I don't think anyone feels they have to go up to the top six, seven picks to take quarterback. But the Jets with that second pick at 10 overall. Well, that might be a hot spot for a quarterback. Right. Yeah. And there's a couple teams that need one now. What do you think they have to get done in the first round, the Jets? I talked to Robert Salo about this yesterday. He said 
not the good thing that you have a lot of needs, but we have a lot of areas we can address. So you really can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. And you just need to get foundational player, not to repeat myself, that can start opening day and be at the end of the season. You're confident we're going to get to a second contract with this guy. Yeah. Barring injury. Okay. That being said, I love the pass rush group in the draft. And I don't think you ever have enough pass rushes. The problem is you have to take them with your first pick. Because this is going to be, it, it, it could come out the first three picks are pass rushers. Really? Yeah. It could be the Michigan kid, right. then Walker, then Thibodeau. One, two, three. Then all of a sudden you're going, wait a second. The guy we want just left. Well, let's just play scenarios here. Let's play hypotheticals. If that happened, you go off onto the line again. Uh, where are you with Jermaine Johnson? Who had a real good week. In yeah, he, did. So, he had a very good week. Yeah. I'd be targeting now because if there's the run that I think they're going to have, obviously this is all fortune telling. Sure. But if it happens that way, I do think that he'll be going a little earlier than he should because no one's going to want to go past that fourth rusher. So he might be going seven, eight or nine, someone in there. But the when we get if three come off the board, the offensive tackles are going to look damn good. Yeah. And everyone's going to be looking at those. And you don't go wrong with tackles. Everyone says, well, you already got one. You got the big. I you know what? get another one you know you can never have enough for that and you need to get a receiver for your guy but right. i think you can get a receiver somewhere else if you move down off 10 for someone who wants a quarterback and you go down just two or three spots you'll get a nice receiver what really do you nice. like at the top i know you you said this is a good well, group when we talking about it every year with the receivers well it's it's a league that 15 years ago in high school football went to the spread the basketball players said, mm, I'm going to be a six foot four guy. I'm not getting a division one basketball scholarship. They're throwing the ball 50 times a night on Friday nights in high school football. Let me go and become a first round draft pick. I mean, Drake London's that kid's a good example mm. of in basketball. What was he going to be right in football? He's going to be a first round pick. I like the two Ohio state kids. I love Olave. Do you? I do. I would do love to have him on my football team. Do you love him more than Garrett Wilson? Yes, I do. And I like them a lot, both of them. But everyone's always Wilson, 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 not me. Interesting. I've interviewed both of them. I like both of them. But you asked me which one I'd take first, I'd be taking Chris. And Alavi can fly. And dynamic with the ball. In the well, side. he's also done other things that always – I'm always looking for a receiver who's not a diva, and Wilson's not a diva. But the guy was the damn gunner on punts. Yeah. He likes special teams. He likes tackling guys. He gets the team thing. He has more production. I just, when I got done with Olave, this happens to coaches all the time. When Olave got up and walked away, I turned to Jimmy Miller and said, <laughs> I would love to coach that guy. So I've got him pretty high. Okay. Uh, Jets, you would think receiver at some point, whether we're going to have to see how the rest of free agency trading period plays out. But this draft, you said loaded with receivers. I want to end with this. Uh, what do you think about Robert Sala and Joe Douglas and the connection? These guys didn't know each other prior to last year. No, there's a learning curve for everybody. Yeah. And that's a good thing. It happens. There's a learning curve for owners as well. And sometimes it takes a while for the owners to figure out life. But they, they look to me like they got it. Robert's an easy guy to work with. He just wants to be a good coach. And he's got an opinion about players. And if, if Joe's listening to that opinion, they'll land up in harmony and they'll go get him. Everyone should learn from Buffalo because Buffalo, that coach and that GM, and that's really what I just got done talking to John Mara, what he said. Yeah. We watched what happens when you have harmony. And on the air, he said, we didn't have a real good line of communication, GM and coach. Right. He goes, we, want, we wanted that. And now we have it. I think the Jets have it right now. Pat Kerwin, you got to go take care of your other business. Great scene as always.